The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 40 of your distance learning session in all of geology with Sunday this one. In the lesson of the day, we'll start with a correction of what we had as an assignment from our last lesson. The assignment says you should outline the steps involved in drawing a topographic section of maps. Outline the steps involved in drawing a topographic section of maps. The answers or the steps involved in drawing a topographic section of maps are we have the very first determine the line along which the section will be drawn. So you start by determining the line along which the section will be drawn. And take note, we are saying that the section, the line that the section will be drawn can be given as grid references. The two locations are given as grid references. Then you locate and you draw your line of section connecting the point. It can be given as letters like A, A prime, or A and B. You are told draw a section, a geologic section along line A, B, or it can be drawn on the map and you are told to draw your section along the line that you have on the map. So that is it for the first step. The next step will be to draw axis of an appropriate scale with the topographic values. Axis of an appropriate axis of an appropriate scale with the topographic values, meaning you come out with your vertical elevation. That is doing that, looking at looking at your contour values and also looking at your scale. From there, you can get an, a good range from which you will use in drawing your section. The next will be to transfer the topographic information from the map to the section. To transfer the topographic information from the map to the section. Meaning that all the contours that are intersected by your line of section should be transferred to your vertical elevation. Any point that a line of section intersect a contour, then that point should be calibrated along your vertical elevation and at the end, you connect all the points and when you connect all the points, you are going to have a topographic profile. Then, after having a topographic profile, you transfer the lithologic boundaries and features that are present in that map or that are affected by your line of section. Take note, that are affected by your line of section, not everything that is on the map. And now, you simply look at the 
Bex or the rock types that are present, which are affected by the line of, line of section, their orientation, which can be given, bear, or the attitude, which can be given using what? They are deep and strike, and you represent that in your section as it occurs in the map. From there now, you also indicate if there was a fault, the same position that the fault was, you indicate that, and other structures like it can be, they can be a river, all of that will be represented. The next step will be using the bedding reading as a guide to draw in the lithologic, the lithological boundaries, both above and below the surface. Both above and below the surface. And when drawing that, you should know that geology extended above the topography is shown by dashed lines. So above the profile, it should be indicated with dashed lines. That is it. Then at the end, all of that information should be put in a box. Your calculated scales written. And if there was a key, a legend, that was there, and you can represent that, you indicate that, then the name, the title of the section should also be included. Our lesson of today is under the topic map work. And the lesson involves Description of structures from simple A4 maps, that is geologic maps. Description of structures from simple A4 maps. What are the type of structures? Exactly what we shall be looking at. So, every geologic map comes with structures. And at your level, you are only expected to interpret what those structures are. So the plan of the lesson will have the objectives, the prerequisites, real life situation, lesson activities, we have exercises, then the assignment. At the end of this lesson, you are expected or you should be able to firstly recognize faults, be able to recognize faults on geologic maps that's a simple a4 map not only recognizing but describing the fault that you've recognized on the map and also also being able to name the type of fault that is there and you are also expected to date the fault that you shall be describing so that already tells us that the very first structure that we'll be describing in geologic maps in the lesson of today will be fold. Now, for us to attain the objectives of this lesson, the following topics will be very much important in our comprehension of the lesson. It is going to help us a lot to understand what we are about to do. Structural geology, petrology, and everything you have on your screen. We go back to our real life situation, which we have a state company needed to identify and locate natural resources and also facilitate land use planning in the subsurface of the locality in Cameroon. A state owned a state company needed to identify and locate natural resources and facilitate land use in the subsurface of a locality in Cameroon. What geologic concept can be used to provide the data needed by this? Is it the concept of surface geology, petrology, environmental geology, or geologic mapping? That is exactly what we are looking at. At the all, we have to answer at the end of the lesson. So, description of geologic structures on simple A4 map. 
The very first of those structure that we will describe today will be fold. Fold. And in structural geology, we already told you what a fold is. And so, now, we are not defining fold where we assume that you already know what a fold is and what we have to do is just recognize it and describe it on geologic maps. Now, how do we first of all recognize a fold? Because for you to describe the fold on a map, you must first of all recognize that this is a fold. If I'm not able to know that here there is a fold or this is a fold, then it will be impossible for me to start describing what I cannot recognize. So, how do I recognize fold in map? I have the very first, take note, the regular repetition of strata around a core bed. Regular repetition of strata around a core bed. We'll look at what that is. And you also have based on the nature of dipping arrows. Based on the nature of dipping arrows. Let's start with the first one. So, regular repetition of strata from or around a core bed. On your screen, I have a diagram. This is an illustration of what it looks like. And these beds, they are actually labeled. The one here is PG. On both sides of PG, I have PX, PX, and GI, JI, and JI. Those are the labels given to this bed. There is also KA and so let's consider this to be the strata in a rock. And we are saying that, or in a map, a different strata in a map. And we are saying that for us to recognize that there is a fold in a map, we need to use the knowledge of repetition of bed or strata, stratum around a particular core bed. Now, in this case here, we have PG. PG is the bed at the center of the map of this strata. PG is what is found at the center. Center is core bed. On both sides of this PG, on both sides of this PG, we have PX, PX, GI, GI, KA, KA. So we can happily say that on both sides of bed PG, we have bed PX, PX repeating themselves, and GI also repeating themselves. That is the meaning of repetition of beds or strata around a core bed. When you have the same bed, in this case, PX, PX, GI, GI, KA, repeating themselves on both sides of PG. So we now consider PG as the core bed or the bed at the center and uh, PX, GI, and KA are the strata that are repeating themselves on both sides of that bed. So, if you find this phenomenon in a map, it definitely means that that is representing a fold. The next method of recognizing a fold in a map is using deep arrows. The dipping nature of arrows. Deep arrows. Now, the deep arrows, remember, the attitude of strata are representing are represented by their strike and their dip. The dip direction is the direction of inclination and the dip. Dip simply means when a layer is inclined 
inclined layer. And so the arrow represents the deep direction and on the deep direction there is always a value representing the deep amount or the amount of deep. So when you find bet in a map that are having these deep arrows and the deep arrows can either be like this as you have it on your screen you find that in on the map on your screen where you have the blue circles flashing they are having this this is the deep direction and this is a stripe deep direction and that is a stripe from two direction in some maps you have it not just the deep direction represented by an arrow like that and on this again you have the values 30 so that already is giving us a deep amount and in this case we can have say 37 and 37 when the arrows are dipping away from each other as you have it here that can represent a fold the arrows can also be dipping towards each other in which case it will be represented as such dipping towards each other from two directions that also can represent a fold so on your map when you find such arrows from two directions on backs dipping towards a particular direction or away from each other definitely there is a fold and take note in an ex the example we have on your screen we have this kind of deep arrows that's deep direction in some maps you will not have this but you can rather have the arrow that is uh, like this all of that are representing we have said that this is the deep direction and that is a stripe here we have just the deep direction that is a different and the value here represents the amount of deep which of course all of that will help you in describing the fold so that is how you recognize that a map is having a fold one based on regular repetition of structure around a center bed or a core bed and two using your when deep arrows are pointing towards each other from bed or away from each other on bed now after recognizing a fold after recognizing a fold what is the next thing you are supposed to do describe describe the fold and to describe a fold there are parameters or there are procedures that you follow to describe that fold what are the procedures we have one location you need to locate where that fold is you don't just take a map and you start describing that the fold is that where is the fold located on the map that you are describing we are supposed to know so you locate the fold after locating the fold you give us the type of the fold and take note location you can use grid reference you can use cardinal direction to locate the fold cardinal direction every map of course will have a cardinal direction so those are all the things that you use to locate you have you give us the type what type of fold is it you give us a reason you talk about the symmetry you give us a trend plunge tightness and a date those are the steps now let us have a map and see how we can describe a fold using those parameters that we have outlined we've said the first is location now let us look at that map first thing is to recognize if it's having a fold so if i focus on the center of that map where you have the red circle you find that there there are two things you have the beds that are repeating themselves on both sides of this bed what are the beds that are repeating themselves you have this ash bed you find out these two are repeating themselves on the white bed that is the first indication on both sides of this the same beds are repeating themselves you also have this and that all of that is on both sides of that the next 
is you also have the next is that you also have deep arrows deep arrows look at here you find that here there is a deep arrow and here there is a deep arrow exactly what we said on that's what we describe here and those deep arrows are having deep values or deep amount here i find that the bed is deep here at 30 degrees and above there it is also 30 degrees so i have arrows that are dipping towards each other take note in this case towards each other from both sides so definitely from the aspect of the two beds repeating themselves along this bed which is the core or the center bed and the deep arrows that are pointing towards each other from two directions i can now conclude that there is a fold where my red circle is enclosing now the next or the very first thing that i do is locate and if i have to look locate that portion of the map using my catena look at this is a catena or direction you find that the north is like that so you find that that is actually found at the center of the map so for the location i give the center and now the next step is type what type of fold is that it is a synclinal fold why is it a synclinal fold you have the deep arrows they are pointing towards each other or they are dipping towards each other meaning that the limbs are dipping towards each other and so when you have a fold where limbs are dipping towards each other this is what it entails the limbs definitely are dipping towards each other that gives me a synclinal structure a synclinal structure so i say a synclinal fold take note the type it is because the limbs are actually the deep arrows that is on the limbs they point towards each other and they are dipping towards each other so that gives me this kind of structure which will give which will be a synclinal fold that is the reason the next thing that is those are the arrows that are dipping towards each other you find on both sides of the bed with their deep values 30 degrees on both sides they are all pointing towards each other now from there we move on to the symmetry what is the symmetry of the fold take note for you to get the symmetry there are two parameters the very first you can at least look at the thickness of the limbs on both sides of the core bed look at the thickness of the limbs on both sides of the core bed are they the same or they are dissimilar when you look at the thickness following the band that you have on your screen you find that those like those the red uh the red arrow that is flashing on your screen is found on the limbs of the uh, fold on both sides of the core bed you find that they are almost the same almost the same the difference is not great so that can from there we say that it is symmetrical if the difference was why we we'll talk of asymmetrical not only that we can also use the deep values let us take an average of the deep values on both sides of the limbs where you have your blue arrow there the deep amount is 30 uh, is 20 30 and when you look on the other you find that the deep value there is also 30 so you find that both limbs deep at angles or an amount of 30 degrees so there should be what symmetrical meaning that you have exactly something that is like this there is none that is steeper there is no limb that is steeper than the other all the limbs they dip at the same amount therefore the trend when you the trend you have to first of all locate the north direction of that map and you know that the trend follows the four axis of the map and you read the trend using the reference which is the reference point which is the north and if we have to go by that you find that the trend of this which is the, uh, we've said that it is the line it follows the four axis and the four axis will bisect this fold into two if so if we have to insert a line that bisect the fold into two it will be here where i have this so it therefore means that if i have to give the cardinal direction of the train i'll have north east southwest 
So northeast, then southwest. Northeast, southwest. That is the trend of the fold. So that is the arrow that is actually showing the trend of the fold. You find that it's having an orientation of northeast, southwest. The next is a plunge. The plunge. The plunge. In. We know that. We know that in an anticline, the plunge points towards the direction of closure of limbs. The plunge points towards where the limbs are closing up. When you look at this, that is it. And the plunge is always represented by a long arrow in some maps. And in maps that they are absent, you now have to think, what type of fold is it? Is it an anticline or is it a syncline? If it's in an anticline, then the plunge will be the cardinal direction that is pointing towards the point of closure of the limbs. If it is a syncline, the plunge points away from the closure of the limbs. Away from the closure of the limbs. So, if this was a syncline, this is how the plunge will look like. Away from the closure of the limbs. Towards the, closure, towards the point of closure of the limbs in a and an anticline and away from the point of closure of limb in a syncline. So in this case, we have already concluded that the fold is a syncline. And this is the direction in which the limbs are actually what? Opening up. Opening. The direction in which the limbs are opening up. Look, this is where they are closing up. You see it there? So it therefore means that the plunge should be pointing in the opposite direction where the limbs are opening. So if you have to look at that, you'll find that the plunge is having the orientation northeast. Northeast. This is it. Northeast. Now, we end up with the dating of the fold. How do we date a fold? How do we date a fold? Now, you use simple relative dating methods simple relative dating method you can use the principle of uh, major tectonic events like folding faulting unconformity that is something we all st we study in stratigraphy reason why we said at the beginning that a good notion of all those uh, topics that we mentioned will help you because here it is like in map work we are bringing everything every concept in geology to explain what is actually represented in that map. So, using simple relative dating method, we'll see that we can simply say here that the fold or the folding event is younger than the rocks that it affects. It is younger than the rocks that it affects. That's the rocks that are folded. The youngest rock that is deposited before it's being folded, that fold is younger than that rock. Or, in this case, again, we find that there is a fault that cut across the fold. How do we know that there is a fault? You actually find displacement here. There is a fault there where that plane of displacement represents the fault plane. So, definitely, that should be a fault. And you find that the fault cut across the fold. So, we can also say that following the principle of cross-cutting, that the fold is the fold is uh, older than the fold. The fold is older than the fold because the fold was there before the fold, the fold came and affected it. So you see that we have actually dated that particular fold using two uh, method ways. You have fold is younger than the bed it affects, the strata that it affects, and the fold, but the fold, fold is also older than the faults that affects it. Okay, that is it for our lesson on uh, the recognizing and describing faults on geologic map. We've said that for recognizing faults, we have based on regular repetition of beds around a center bed, the nature of dipping arrows, and the steps for describing a fold. Take note. We have the location, the type, the reason, the symmetry, the trend, the plunge, the time, and the date. And we have taken time to explain all of that.
A state company needed to identify and locate natural resources and facilitate land use planning in a subsurface of a locality in Cameroon. What concept in geology can be used to provide the data needed by this state company? We form our lesson. If you follow the lesson very well, you find that the notion of geologic mapping is what is needed to note or to uh, give provide data for that company. From there, we move on to the exercises. We have the very first exercise. The, di the diagram below can represent. The diagram below can represent. What can you represent? You find a, a fold, a folded st structure, and you have a plunge direction which is pointing away from the, uh, the closure of the limbs. So, what can that be? That should definitely be a plunging syncline. A plunging syncline. The D long arrows, which is representing a plunge direction, is there, and you find that. The, it is pointing away from the closure towards the direction of closure of the uh, away from the direction of closure of the limbs. That is what we said. What type of fold is found in the southeast portion of the map beside? What type of fold? Southeast portion. This is a nod. This is a nod represented here. So this will be the southeast. What type of fold is represented there? You find that there, there are the deep, you use deep arrows and even repetition of bed. But now, to know the type of fold, you find that the arrows are dipping towards each other. So that takes us to a synclinal fold. What is the name? What is the trend of fold B on the map beside? Trend or fold B trend. You have this is fold B. Look at the direction, look at the north of that map. You find that it is northeast, southwest. Assignment, describe the folding in the map. That is it. So for further reading, you can use the uh, consult the following text or textbooks. And so that, that is a reference references of what we use in establishing the lesson. So our next lesson will be description of structure still on um, simple A4 maps. And in this time, we'll be describing fault. See you in our next lesson. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyom. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia niña ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa kina bia jinkido. Mane tambia niña ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike. Tam tam tama mote tam zabike. Mane tambia niña ne injubia yen.